What's going on, everybody? You found Bottom Tier Collector. I'm your host, The Bearded One, bringing you top five bottom keys from a Bottom Tier Collector. This challenge, I believe, came from Alex, the Comic Quarter. I don't remember if I'm sub to that guy. I need to sub to the guy. Got to continue to help grow the community, socialize, network. That's really what I'm on here on YouTube for because I can do comics out off the camera. So what I come to YouTube for is to nerd out and geek out with other people. I'm here for the social aspect of it. So you need to remember to go track down Alex's channel. You do too if you're not sub to him. And uh, let's uh, show that guy some love for starting this top five favorite, not top five most valuable, not top five biggest keys. Just top five favorite keys in your PC uh, challenge. And originally, you know, I'm used to by now a lot of people starting challenges and then being open-ended. But Alex the Comic Quarter actually tagged specific people. And so I didn't participate. And it actually came through to 22 comics, fellow statesmen, Roll Tide, you Barner, you. Uh, I, I still love my Auburn fans. I want Auburn to be good so we can knock them off their pedestal, right? I want the Iron Bowl to be strong and good. And I hope Auburn fans want the same thing for us. I want Alabama to continue to be dominant so that you can knock them off, you know, our pedestal. That's what would make. That's what makes rivalries so good when both teams are good. So Roll Tide, you Big Barner, you. Thank you, Twenty Two Comics, for. Uh, Tagging me, I've never actually been tagged in a challenge uh, officially, so I'm going to participate. First up, and, and uh, let me preface, I don't want to take too long, <clears throat> but these five books, you know, I ranked them, you know, it's going to be in the order of favorite keys, I guess, but uh, this this short box right here behind me is most 99% of the biggest books in my collection. Any books of any value or hold any significance in my collection. It's kind of designed as a um, a protective feature, I guess, security feature, if you will. So instead of taking a big long box, I'll just grab the short box, and most of the value in my collection can go with me in the case of a natural disaster, flood, fire, etc. Uh, and that way, you know, I, I don't lose the biggest books. I don't lose the the most amount of work and savings and money I put into the hobby. And, and it might not discourage me enough to get out of the hobby. It might want, it might fuel a fire in me to, to restart my collection. So that's, that's uh, kind of the idea behind the short box. Anyways, I'm getting off trail. Just wanting to mention the short box and the fact that any five books from this collection could have been chosen. Uh, I don't know if I have an official top five favorite keys, but we're gonna try it. Anyways, all right, let's get into it. Rabbit trails aside. Coming at number five, I've got TMNT number seven. For some reason, I got it in my head that TMNT number eight is the origin of the turtles, but it's actually number seven. I even got it signed by Kevin Eastman and I still forgot which number it was. Um, I haven't read the book yet. It's coming. I'm actually going to do a review on it. So hopefully you're looking forward to that if you follow the channel. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I, I'm in a big Turtles phase right now. I, I downloaded this Turtles video game. Uh, I'll save that for uh, the end of the video. But uh, yeah, glad to have something signed by Kevin Eastman. Glad to have the origin of the Turtles. It's a first print. I know the second print of number seven is way more valuable, but uh, kind of something I'm toying with pursuing is completing the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Volume 1 run. I, I can't afford all first prints, obviously, but I'm going to do what I can. I'm going to do what I can afford, and uh, maybe one day I'll have a complete run. That'll be really cool. Next up, we got Mr. Miracle number one. Yeah, official. No, not a facsimile here. This is officially the oldest book in my comic book collection. It used to be this random Batman issue that I've shown in previous issues or previous episodes. I think I showed it in one of my tips and tricks videos. Bronze Age Batman book, but I know for a fact this is older than that issue. Uh, so it's the oldest issue in my collection. Uh, not a very fantastic copy, you know. I mean, it's, it's a Bronze Age key, right? So, 
So it's going to be hard finding a 9.8. But Mr. Miracle kind of started it all for me and with Jack Kirby. My introduction to Jack Kirby officially outside of watching videos and hearing what other people have to say. My first-hand experience with Jack Kirby and his work starts with Mr. Miracle number one. Uh, it got me into Fourth World. It got me into liking actual, and I hate to use a wrestling term for a comic hobby, but it got me into babyface characters, you know, the, the actual heroes of the comic book world. Me being such an Etrigan, Wolverine, Lobo, Spawn fan, don't really pull for the baby faces of, of the superhero genre. But uh, Mr. Miracle kind of changed a lot of that for me. I love Mr. Miracle. And so I had to acknowledge his first appearance on this list. Definitely a favorite key of mine. And I just think the art's gorgeous. I think it's one of the best, if not the best cover Jack Kirby's ever done. Uh, his art style just kind of hit and miss for me. I, I'll be real. Uh, there's just some panels that I'm like, I get Jack Kirby. I, I like Jack Kirby. And then there's other panels where I'm like, Jack Kirby uh, definitely had a rush style. Uh, definitely rushed through a lot of his comic books. But right here, everything seems so proportionally correct. And, and I love the colors. The colors pop so well. And one thing I love about my copy, the colors are still so beautiful and vibrant on, on my copy. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I could go on forever about my Mr. Miracle number one. But I'm going to get on to another comic book I could talk forever about. Sandman number four. Um... Uh, I've got all the big boy books in the Sandman universe except like two and some other one, ten. Uh, but I've got the, the big three Sandman books. I've got Sandman 1, Sandman 4, Sandman 8. Um, Death is... It's a toss-up. It's like Crazy Jane, Death, and Big Barda are like fighting in my head for my favorite female character in all of comic books. Uh... In, in Death's first appearance is Sandman 8. And then Sandman 1, I love Morpheus. And, and Sandman 1 started it all. My obsession with Sandman started at Sandman 1, obviously. Um, but I think Sandman 4, it holds a special place in my heart. Sandman 4 is where it really won me over as a story. Sandman 4 uh, is one of the greatest single issue stories of all time in my full opinion um it's the first appearance of lucifer morningstar who's a very very interesting and perplexing character and and a lot of these characters are very deep uh the storytelling is just next level complex if you like complex storytelling it, i don't know if it gets any more complex than sandman honestly um but yeah, I decided to go with number four, even though one and eight could have easily made the list because number four uh, holds a special place in my heart with that story. Uh, I don't want to spoil too much, but Sandman has to retrieve his crown. He's the Lord of Dreams. If you don't know much about Sandman, Sandman is the Lord of Dreams in this mythos, and he travels to hell to retrieve his crown. Uh, and that's all I want to say about that. Uh, very fantastic story. Next up, uh, number two, top five favorite key in my in my collection. <clears throat> I have to honor Wolverine. So Wolverine number one. Uh, every time I look at this issue, uh, I just kick myself in the head. I had this entire story, and I bought this at a time. First of all, I'll tell I'll tell one story. Go on to a different tangent. I had so much FOMO back ten years ago. Like, the, the X-Men franchise was dying um, I, I, oh, 10 years ago. I'm trying to think of what movies were out. Maybe Age of Ultron was out in, in 2013. I, I can't remember. But, uh, yeah, I had so much FOMO for this run. Because that was one of the first things, as I was understanding the hobby and understanding how I wanted to collect. One of the first things I figured out that I wanted to do was collect runs and I wanted to start I wanted to go in order which is not 
it's not realistic for a character like Wolverine to to start at the beginning. Uh, is it possible? It's very possible, but I think uh, it's more realistic for people that shop on a budget to just grab Wolverine solo issues as they come to them. Uh, you can you can uh, fill runs a lot faster that way if you grab them as they're coming to you. But like ten years ago, I had so much fun while purchasing this, and I bought the whole set for a hundred dollars. Uh, and and this book raw is like a hundred dollars. Uh, not the greatest copy in the world. Maybe a 7.5, maybe higher, maybe an 8.0. I don't know. But I don't think I'd give my copy an 8.5 even. There's just so many spine ticks. And then it's cut unevenly right here. Uh, definitely not white pages at all. But still, I love my copy. I paid, paid hard-earned money for it, and I love it. Um... Yeah, I owned the whole set the year I met Chris Claremont, and such a scrub. I full, I fully admit it. I was such a scrub and such a noob. Uh, I'm still. I, this is before I got into CLZ. CLZ has helped me out so much. For all you people out there that don't have a way to database your collection, I strongly suggest going to CLZ or going to a website or a service that will show you who created each comic book. I wasn't doing that at the time I met Chris Claremont. And so I only got Chris Claremont to sign my four covers of X-Men 1 from the 90s. A worthless book. Granted, if I had brought this series to Chris Claremont, um, I still would have gotten my X-Men 1 signed. I even had Wolverine 1 from Volume 2. I didn't, I didn't even know until the other day that Chris Claremont wrote... Chris Claremont wrote Wolverine number one. I didn't even know that until I reviewed it the other day. Um, so, big miss. And every time I look at this book, I'm reminded that, you big dummy, you could have got these books signed by Chris Claremont. And, and I didn't. So, I'm chasing Chris Claremont down for sure. Uh, hopefully, he can come to Huntsville again. And I'll get him to sign it. But yeah, Wolverine number one. I may never have a Hulk 181, but at least I have a Wolverine one, right? First solo Wolverine iconic cover. Uh, I have this cover on a t-shirt. I'm way too overweight and oversized for that shirt anymore. But that's a goal shirt. One of my weight loss goals is to fit into that shirt once again. And then last but not least... Uh, this was hard to crown this as my favorite key. I got so many favorite books in my collection, so many sentimental books for me. Uh, but I went with Lobo number one. I had to showcase a book to my goat, my uh, my favorite comic book character of all time, Lobo. And the reason I went with this book over Omega Men, well, really, uh, Omega Men 3, the memories I have, the story behind me purchasing that book, means more to me than the story inside. I don't think the story inside Omega Men 3 is all that great. It's also a completely different iteration of Lobo that we uh, <clears throat> we don't see for very long in, in comic books. Uh, I think the, the way he looks is a little silly. So, uh, didn't go with Omega Men number 3, even though it's technically the first appearance. Really, truly, the first appearance of this version of the character is Justice League International 18. Uh, and almost went with that book, but I prefer this story a lot better. And I feel like Lobo 1 is really where it happens. Really where Lobo catches fire uh, with fans. And really the title push, as I call it, for Lobo begins at this issue. This iconic cover, S Simon Bisley. I'm going to say his name right. I've heard Simon Bisley pronounce his name so I'm going to quit saying Simone Bisley once and for all. It's, it's Simon Bisley. Uh, and, uh, I mean, it's just it's just a gorgeous cover. It's a cover everybody knows in comic books. If you're a, if you're a comic book fan, you know, of, with any experience of in the hobby at all, you've come across this cover. You've come across this book. I know you have. Uh, and... You, it's not the most valuable book in the world. 
I think Omega Men 3 is going to continue to be the book for um for Lobo. I also think Green the Green Lantern 55 1 and 25 variant is going to be another big boy book for Lobo just because of that gorgeous cover. Um you know, this book is going to it's going to be the TMNT 7 of of the character. <clears throat> It's going to be very important, very key story. Possibly the most important book Lobo has is Lobo 1 because it's his origin, right? And it's also the, the watershed moment for the character, uh, both in appearance because this, this cover went, went over with fans, I would imagine. And then, and then um, it just caught fire and... and that's when all the incredible legendary miniseries came out after Lobo One. Uh, so had to go with Lobo One. Had to acknowledge the greatness. Uh, I feel I feel like it's over celebrated sometimes. As a Lobo fan, you know, having experienced all the big boy books, having most of the big boy books in my collection. Uh, the only big boy book I really need in my collection now is a book that Lobo just cameos in. So, uh, I, I just feel like, you know, yeah, got been there, done that, got the t-shirt, moved on kind of thing about this book. But it's still nice to come back to it. And it's still okay. Uh, it's still okay for me. I have to tell myself, you know, even though you're past this book, you're past the story, you've read it, you've digested it, you've processed it. Uh, it's still okay for you to come back and talk about it and celebrate it. Even though everybody else uh, is, is big on the book too. It's okay. I gotta tell myself that sometimes. Um, that'll do me, guys. I gotta get off here. I gotta go do my husbandly duties. Get your mind out of the gutter. Not talking about that. Um, house cleaning at the end of the show. Um, gonna be trying to fit in. I, I recently downloaded TMNT uh, Shredder's Revenge on my mobile phone. Netflix Games owns the property. I don't think they made the game. But they own the license to to uh, distribute the game, if you will. Download it on my phone. Great, fantastic game. So stay tuned for that. I don't know if it's a new game, but stay tuned for that um, review coming out this week. And then uh, Team and T7. I think we're going to do that. You guys never told me you wanted to see me read more of Wolverine Volume 2. I'm not going to review anything else from Wolverine Volume 2 until someone comments and tells me. And you got to comment on that video. You got to comment on the Wolverine number one review video. I made it real easy to find. So I read Wolverine number one 10 years after I bought the issue. You got to go back to that video and tell me you want to see me review more Wolverine if that's what you want. But until then, I'm going I'm to hold you guys accountable. And I'm not reviewing any more Wolverine. If I'm going to read Wolverine, it's going to be off camera from now on. At least from volume two. Volume two. Uh, I think that's all the house cleaning, guys. Thanks again, 22 Comics, uh, for challenging me to to do this. Not the most exciting keys in the world. I understand. I have a couple more. Very. Um, I have a couple more books that are much more valuable than any book I displayed here. I got a variant or two that's more valuable than any of these books, I, I believe. But uh, these are my five favorite keys. And that is what this challenge is about. I'd also like to keep the challenge going. There are some people I'm, I'm interested in to see their top five favorite keys. So Fanboy Prime, I'm calling you out. I'd like to see your five favorite keys. Let's see. Alex Big Blue. You don't post a lot of keys. Alex Big Blue, if you see this, I want to see your top five favorite keys. And let's see here. I'm going to go with Neil Collects. Neil Collects. If you see this video, I want to see your top five favorite keys. I don't feel like you show your comic collection enough, Neil Collects. And I want to see your top five favorite keys. Uh, if I didn't, if I didn't challenge you, please don't feel offended. 
Uh, I'm leaving room for some very beloved channels to get challenged by other people. And uh, I'm just intrigued by some people in the community, you three that I challenged, because you, I don't feel like you show your key books enough. And I'm just curious to see what you got. Uh, that'll do me for this time, guys. Thank you for challenging me. Thank you for watching the content, subscribing, liking, all that stuff. I love this community. And uh, until next time, guys.